Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you to our witnesses. It's been a really interesting hearing. Uh, Mr. Shen, I wanted to ask you about some of your interactions with the FDA, because we're really at a crossroads when it comes to devising a regulatory framework for artificial intelligence. We can either follow the lead of entities like the European Union, who believe that uh, AI is its own uh, kind of unique discipline and that there needs to be a, a separate bureaucracy spun up to issue licenses with respect to the use of AI, or we can follow the lead of countries like the UK, who has pointed out that because the risk of AI is so contextual, uh, that the existing sectoral authorities are best equipped uh, to, to regulate within their sectoral spaces with a bunch of technical help and resource. So uh, I was curious, I mean, we're, we're, we have to choose, right? That's, we're at a crossroads, we, have, we can go one way or the other way, there's really no middle ground. Which of those two paths do you think we should follow? Is it easier to teach the FDA what it doesn't know about AI, or, or is it easier to teach a brand new agency everything the FDA already knows about ensuring patient safety? Yeah, uh, very good question, Congressman. I think certainly this is a, is a tricky topic, but I think what we have to remember is that, the, that at least in our industry from a vendor perspective, we have been working closely with the FDA for many, many years here. And we work as, as Siemens Health Nears. We have direct dialogues with them around this topic on a, on a, on a weekly basis. I think the other thing that's important to re remind ourselves here, especially in the, in the context of artificial intelligence, is that AI is, is, is not, can't not just be considered as a separate type of technology, but this technology is also being embedded into the medical devices themselves as well. So, so for instance, you know, CT scanners or MRI scanners, they have AI that's built in there into that system that allows for better image quality or faster, faster exams for the patient. So a lot of benefits to the patient are happening already with the AI technology built into the, tech, uh, built into the medical devices themselves. So we have to consider that, especially when we consider how we want to uh, move forward with the FDA. Right. Uh, I think that's a good point. Uh, I also am heartened by your comment that you feel the existing re regulatory relationship with the FDA is doing a good job at uh, both ensuring patient safety and uh, catalyzing innovation. Uh, and so, I mean, I think that's a, a pretty powerful argument, you know, for, uh, for maintaining that relationship and empowering the FDA to regulate in that space. Uh, Dr. Newman Tolker, uh, thank you very much for your testimony. You said something that I found incredibly interesting. Uh, you said that the best that we can expect from AI is that it repeat the existing human bi biases that exist in the data it was trained with. And uh, I, I found that a fascinating statement. I, I mean, I, uh, I don't like the use of the word bias because it's a very human word. And when you apply it to a machine learning algorithm, I mean, there's no such thing as bias. They're all biased. I mean, machine learning is all about bias because you're training it to generalize. You know, and, and we, we call that bias when we talk about uh, uh, kind of maintaining our social, uh, social standards. You know, when we say, for example, it would be wrong to consider someone's race when making a hiring decision. We can all agree that that's true. But uh, that also means scrubbing the data that we use to train AI that makes those recommendations for things that can be used as proxies for race. And that's the, the difficulty that we've had so far. So you, you were talking about how important it is in, uh, in the, co the medical context of maintaining high quality data sets to avoid those kinds of biases. Um, how do we ethically navigate this space of, uh, of patient consent? You know, if, if you have a chest x-ray, and I think it was uh, Dr. Longhurst that was talking about uh, detecting uh, uh, COVID uh, pneumonia from a chest x-ray. You know, if, you, if you're a patient, you come in, you get a chest x-ray, you have not consented for the use of that x-ray to be used to train a machine learning algorithm. You know, do you have the right to say, no, I don't want my data used? Uh, and if you do, I mean, the problem is that is introducing bias into the algorithm because, you know, from a statistical sense, you're biasing the outcome of the algorithm because who knows what else the group of people who would you know, withhold consent have in common, right? So uh, a, a statistician would say that's a serious problem. So how do we navigate that space? How do we, how do we protect the, the uh, patient data at the same time avoid biasing these algorithms? Uh, thank you, Congressman. This is a great question. So uh, 
you know, I come from the world of clinical research where there's always the opportunity to refuse to participate, and I'm generally of the mind that that, that, that that should always be the case, that if patients wish to opt out, they do. It does create a certain bias. There's a volunteer bias of those who want to participate. Um, but I think that's a bias we can accept. As far as the issue of um, the, the replicating the sort of human biases, as I mentioned in my testimony, I believe that we have um, this at, it exists at diff two different levels, but the most important piece is where our biases are causing us to behave differently as clinicians. So if, if I don't order the same test in a black patient that I order in a white patient for the same circumstance and the same condition and the same appropriateness, um, that's the kind of bias that I don't want to replicate in my AI systems. And I think that's why well-curated gold standard data sets are so critical. Yeah, I, well, I would agree. And I'm an AI optimist, so I would actually argue against your statement, you know, that the best we can expect is the replication of existing biases. I think it's a golden opportunity to remove the biases. Well, I see I'm out of time, uh, but thank you very much for your testimony. Thank I yield you. back, Mr. Chairman. Thank